Hello, my friend Titi. When you think of Japan, what comes to mind? Perhaps anime depicts polite people as being peaceful and respectful, which is kind of true. After all, Japan is a stunning country with a rich cultural heritage. But what if I tell you that things weren't always this way? Japan has some of the most horrifying cases in the globe, much like other nations. One of the most terrible cases in Japan to this day is the Junku Furuta case. On November 25, 1988, considering her age of 17, she was returning from her shift and was a delight worker. She worked at a plastic molding company while she was a high school student. Because she worked part-time, she attended work in the evening and school in the morning. She was clearly not an average student at school. Therefore, it was difficult for her to do both, but at the same time, she was doing it. She consistently received all A's and above. Like other girls, she doesn't need more expensive jewelry or clothing. It was not like her style. She needs money, but not for these things. Not that having those particular traits is terrible, but she was a tomboy. She needed money for her graduation trip. She was mulling above all the fun things she and her buddies need to do. While heading home, she was thinking about how much she was looking forward to the final episode of her favorite drama. When she was unexpectedly bumped into by a bike, she was unsure about the person's source, and they ran away. They did not even turn back. She lost grip on her bag that she has a while ago, and now was on the ground in pain and agony. However, almost like a TV drama, a complete stranger comes to her and offers his hand. She looks up to the guy, which almost looks like her age, or perhaps a year older. She hesitates for a moment before accepting his offer. I mean, it was almost dark, and she was in pain. He approached her and remarked, The guy is really scary. He also threatened me, but let me help you. She hesitates for a moment before agreeing, except he was a gang member. But does she know? <laughs> of course not. He requested her to recline on his bed while he started his bike. She may have begun this work two months ago, but even though this was obviously not her home route, I mean, what was happening? She would start panicking. I mean, that time, you don't have those phones that we have right now to call your parents. So she feel helpless. She tried to convince herself, maybe it's a different route that she never took. He brought her to a warehouse not far away. She was obviously terrified by this moment and even more so because she had no idea that she was about to be held captive for more than 40 days. We are four complete stranger, age of 16, 17, and 18. We're gonna SA her torture her, burn her private parts, and made her drink her own urine for 40 days. Basically, a hell she was going to step in. And the fact is, she didn't even know these teenagers. Let's see the situation of Junko Furuta and her attackers, who are basically free right now. I would like to provide a small caution here or disclaimer, as this case involves the torture of women. So if you are sensitive to these kind of material, I advise against watching. And let me also add that I obtained all of this information from Japanese and English articles I found online. With that being said, let's get started with today's episode. Furuta, who was born in 1971, was cherished by her parents, was an apple of her parents' eyes. Not just because she was the only daughter of her parents with two brothers, but because of how great she was and managing her school and her part-time job and herself. She was more like a charismatic girl. They're saying that beauty and brain can't be had at once, but she proves it wrong. I mean, how can someone be so good at studying and do a part-time job? And on top of them, they're pretty too, which might be dramatic in today's time, but was very difficult at that time. Other girls kind of envy her management and grades and think, oh, she might have a dozen of boys lying up for her, which can be true to some extent. But the problem was she was not interested in any of that. She was more like a tomboy. When other girls were talking about boys, she was catching bug, like she was literally not afraid. She was playing badminton like all day. She can be seen playing dodgeball too. Like that's how her personality was. They also call her a sandwich because she was like a middle child with an older brother and younger brother, whom she was pretty close to. Other than that, she liked watching dramas, but not your typical love story but more like cool, tomboyish fun. So this is how her personality was. She was living a carefree, 
yet responsible life. On the other hand, four school dropouts in 1988 believed they were special. These four teenagers were schoolmen. Because they were teens at the time, the court referred to them as A, B, C, and A, which is normal practice. But some journalists appear to have exposed their names. So I will refer to them by their names in this video. So the first person in this list was Miyano Hiroshi, who was 18 at the time. I believe he was oldest of them. Joe Gora, 17, followed by Shinji Minato, 16, and Watanabe Yusushi, 17. Now these four kids have created a gangster image around the Ayase area of Japan. What they do is kidnap women from the streets and take all their valuable belongings. They never were apprehended despite the fact that it occurred repeatedly, which just added to their confidence. You might be wondering like how this is even possible, like a bunch of teenagers doing all these activities. Are they orphans, homeless? Like how their parents don't know about their lives? But the thing is, they had parents, so they weren't quite orphans. And it seems that the parents were terrified by these kids too. Now what did truly occur and when did this begin? It's really interesting to see. It appears that Shinji and Akura become closer to Shinji's elder brother, whom we are going to call E here. So Shinji and Akura now are assisting E in his quest for a motorcycle. And it's then that Okura sort of officially joins the gang. Now they made their little office, if you will, at Shinji's home on the second floor, where both brothers and Ogura would hang out and plan their next step or whatever crime they were about to commit. It was said that Shinji and E's parents didn't really care about them. Why? Well, it's said that because both brothers were quite violent with their parents, they just couldn't handle them. The second reason was that both parents were working so they didn't really have enough time and they were not really at home anyway. The oldest friend among them, Miano was referred to as A. He also gets close with Shinji and his brother E. So now they are four people. Miano eventually helped E search for a stolen motorcycle, I believe. And after that, he kind of become an official member of their group. Now for the last one, Watanabe Sushi, referred to as D, who was a childhood friend of E, also began to hang out with them. So now there are five people. But the photo case involved four people except E. Now these five started doing every crime you can possibly think of. They would snatch from women on the bike roaming around the city. But they didn't stop at just snatching. They would kidnap those women, take their valuable things and SA them, then release them. They even helped at a flower shop owned by a man ties to a criminal gang. So this was their life at this point, regardless of whether their parents knew or not. They become a close-knit community. Miano becomes more like a boss to them after E. So he was like a leader, I would say, who tells them what to do. It was said they made 120,000 yen in just a few months by snatching from women. They searched on November 25, 1988, at approximately 8 p.m for one more underprivileged woman, where Miano happened to see Fruto on her bike on her way home. Miano then tells Shinji to hit Fruto's bike. After that, Shinji flew from the scene and Miano played the whole role. Getting her trust, he said he'd leave her at her home, which at first she refused but then agreed, as I mentioned before, and took her to a nearby warehouse. Do you guys know Yukuzu group? They are like the mafia group from like 300 years ago, I guess, in Japan. And they had really criminal influence at that time. He casually called himself one of their members to her and said if she did not follow what he said, there were people outside of her house who were gonna kill her whole family. So he was threatening her. He then takes her to a hotel where she was assaulted by him. From the hotel, Miano called Shinji telling him he had a girl with him at a hotel. They then agreed to meet at a nearby park with two others, so like all four of them. And Miano bought photo too. Again, they threatened her and took her to Shinji's house, where she was gang raped by all four of them for almost five days. She was held captive in his house as they continued to assault her. On the other side, Fruto's parents were searching for her and for them, she completely disappeared, which was definitely not her nature. Now on 27 November, Proto's parents made a call to the police 
but not much was found. In the house, she was assaulted again. When parents found that there is a girl in their house screaming and crying, and when they're comforted by their son, he will tell them, oh, she is my girlfriend. He also told Fruto to play along as her girlfriend, which is clearly not it. I mean, they can see it's not like they can't, but they just turn a blind eye because they were afraid of him again, as I said. Like, what? On November 3, so after five days, they made her call her mom through the public telephone, but she was forced to say that she's fine and run away by her own, living with her friends. I'm sure Fruto's parents didn't believe it, like this was not her. But they tried what they could report and not much was found. On November 28, the torture gets severe, which I don't know I can tell in details. It's just hella cruel, but I'm still going to tell some incidents and I'm going to put screenshots that I found. Talking about the torture, you can read on the screen. But in these 44 days, she went through a lot. November 27, she was gang raped by four of them. After that, Shinji shaved her pubic hair with a razor. Then he did a meth stick on her private parts. Other things include being consistently beaten and assaulted about 500 times. They would make her dance to the music on the balcony with nothing on. Malnourished, so like no food but a bread a day or a sip of milk and forced to drink her own urine. If she refused to do any of that, they would beat her till she passed out. It was said that the assault was so severe that at some point, she literally pleaded with them to kill her already. It was said she was also swollen and bloody to the point she couldn't even move to go to the bathroom, which was like on the ground floor. And in order to get there, she would literally crawl for like an hour because at this point, she just couldn't move. So it's a context like how bad her injuries were. One time, Miano slipped on her urine and he was just so pissed. He then lit her thighs on fire with a matchstick and beat her consistently. Her hands and face were basically all parts of her body were so bloody. I mean, we can imagine the suffering she went through. And I'm literally thinking for hours, like how sick in the mind do you have to be to do all that? One time, I think at the beginning, she tries to escape. She gets the telephone too, but she eventually gets caught and they beat her. So in January 1989, Mira lost his money in gambling and just used her as his punching bag. I mean, this is what they've been doing for like 40 days now. They continue beating her and left the room for like 10 hours on and off. Whatever they could find, they just use it on her. Not just one, but all four of them. They have metal they use on her, burn her body with cigarettes. Her face was so swollen to the point it was literally at the height of her nose. They beat her for 10 hours straight. They continue beating her and left the room after 10 hours. Now E, the older brother of Shinji, came to see her. And when he realized he was not moving, he got panicked and he called all of them. Said then Agora, I guess, casually let out a cigarette, get it closer to her nose. Then he said, no smoke. Then he realized she's deceased. So she was gone from their continuous 10 hour assault and 44 days of torture. Now all of them were sweating and panicking. They discussed what to do. Finally, they put a blanket on her body and put her in a big travel bag. Then they dump her in a can or drum full of concrete. They dropped the concrete to a park around 8 p.m. the same day to the vacant the countryside construction site at a park and dumped the can in a foreign truck and fled the scene. Literally for two months, no one found a single clue about Fruta's body or anything. So no one knew, like, where was she? Also, they didn't stop here. They were continuing the assaults on other women until one day when they were called for the gang rape, which they did in December of 1988. At the same time, they were holding Fruta captive and torturing her, but that didn't stop them from finding more women and assaulting them. So they were arrested for that crime. We don't know much information like how they were called for the murder of that woman, but it was said that the woman was murdered and her son was also. So they were arrested for that crime. But no one knew what happened to Fruto. I mean, I don't know, it's just so disrespectful to me. But when Miano was questioned for that girl case, he thought that they were getting caught for Fruta case. Thought that Shinji told them like everything about the mother and so. And so in panic, 
He told them where the Futa's body is. So I'm assuming four of them questioned separately. Shinji was like in a different room and other three in different. So he thought they were questioning him them for like Futa's mother. I mean, the police were confused. They were questioning them for a different case, but they were talking about something else. The fact is, I don't know what to say because the case they were questioning is still unsolved to this day. On March 29, after almost three months, the body was discovered at the location of Miano describes. When they opened the drum and took out the body to ensure it was Futo, it was said it was in such a terrible condition that the experienced investigators were turned a blind eye. It was said, and I caught, the body had decomposed to the point where it was like a human being stuffed in a can. But because she had been beaten and kicked all over her body, the color of her face, not to mention her face, was pitch black everywhere. Bottles and metal ropes were found inserted in her private parts, and her brain was shrinked. It's like it's been squeezed. So this was her body condition. She was later identified by the fingerprints found on her body. So this is how she was discovered and her discovery was just an accident. Like we don't know if Miano hasn't confessed, they would even found her body anytime soon. And her body might have gone away because it was in a drum filled with concrete. Miano, Ogura, Shinji, his brother and Watanabe Yusushi were all charged for Junko's murder and assault. They were all over the news the next day. But the thing that really made netizens angry and upset was that their identities and everything were meant hidden under Juveline law. So just because they were under 20, their identities were kept safe. But I believe in cases like this, we should know who and where those people are. But later, thankfully, some journalists uncovered their identities and it was published in a local newspaper. According to them, they don't deserve to be safe like this. And now the whole Japan knows their names and their faces. Except that some of them are still not really exposed, like their faces, but at the same time it was. The nation was shocked by their cruelty and young age. Futa's parents and family was also informed about the tragedy. It was said that on May 29, 1989, after a month, Shinji's mother, the house owner she was kept held in, would, would publish articles about Futa. Like she was the one who did everything. Like I'm assuming she was in like some higher post. So she has that power and authority to write all these things about her. During court, Agura's lawyer's argument. And yeah, these criminals had lawyer and attorneys. People like actual people who defend them. He was told that he doesn't take any part in the gangway. But he did because of Miano's pressure. Like what? But later, he admitted doing humiliating acts on her. So it was proof that he did so much more than he says. Other attorneys argue that their plan was not to kill her, basically saying that she died from her own wounds. Upon asking why they put her in a concrete drum, they said because they were so afraid and scared of police finding out. As for forensic report of Futo, they found that her body was heavily malnourished. To give you context, Every woman's subconscious weight is about 30 to 40, but she has two thirds that of the average woman. We just showed she was in the last stage of malnourished. Her body, as I say, had burn marks all over. It was also proven, like not really proven, but it was said that they were planning to kill her and dispose of her body in the December of 1980. So they have been playing this for like the day they bought her. Miano would later say that he realized he was getting weaker and not moving. And when he told others, like she is going to die if they hit her anymore, they would say, are you kidding? Can't you see she's faking it? So he started abusing her again. That takes iron bars from the corner of the room, which weighs 1.74 kilograms and slam on her body. When they realized she is not moving or defending herself, they did even harder. Furthermore, on the third day of January, when she was not responding, like her body was stiff, they still continued to assault her. And they were casually admitting everything, like they were not hiding. There was a one-hour documentary made during the trial, which was in Japanese, so of course I wasn't able to watch. But I did find some translations of like some parts. 
For example, in one part, you can see a reporter approaching Miano's mother, said, could I speak to you for a moment? She was like an outside, I mean. So she was coming back from her work and she was like attacking her bike. So the reporter approached to answer question and she said, could you please stop? And the reporter said, so we heard that none of the boys' pants have apologized to Miss Furta's pants. To answer, she said, excuse me. He then asked, like, did they contact Fruta's parents or, like, want to say something to them? To answer, she said, she don't think she can. You can see she almost, like, want to hide her face, but were not able to. And she just want them to go away. She just wants to disappear, like, in a snap, which she did on her bicycle, which was kind of interesting to see. At the end of July 1990, all four members were found guilty by the Tokyo District Court. They appealed in 1991, which only resulted in longer sentences. The brother E was not found guilty by the court because they say he was not included in the assault and killing, which I don't know. The sentence was criticized because of how light it was, with Miano getting 17 years. After his appeal, he will get 20 years. Ogura get 5 to 10 years. Shinji was sentenced to 5 years, then sentenced to 5 to 10. And Watanabe Sushi was sentenced to 3 to 4 years. Because of these light sentences, they received heavy criticism, with netizens sending court letters demanding a harder and life imprisonment sentences. But they said the sentence was according to the crime and was fair which i don't know again there was some drama to include this like some celebrities that they were like kind of mixing them like for example a one celebrity they said that she was a girlfriend of one of the gang members like and she knew all the assault and she was present that time which was not really proven as she was died in 2008 so we don't know if it was true or not there was some books and mangas made in the incident which again gets highly criticized because in one part they show that Fulto was fallen in love with one of the members like yeah which was of course not true and was not acceptable so they just kind of romanticize the whole cruel incident it was criticized a lot now if you talk about the life after they were released in 2009 so Miano was released in 2009. He then moved with her mother and get some jobs. And because he had some link with people, he managed to get many jobs. He was called into fraud case in 2019, but was released shortly after. The people who know him would say he would break about the women's and his relationship with them. But he never brought up the photo case and his involvement almost as if he was hiding. He apparently loved gym like kickboxing and he's like in his 50s now I guess and living a luxury life with no remorse. The second victim if you talk about Jo Gura or B was released in 1999. It was said that he was adopted by someone and changed his name or surname to theirs. He also said to work at some kind of firm like he gets some knowledge during jail but eventually gets fired because people at work know about him. Also gets married and got divorced shortly after. He joined a gang where he shamelessly bragged about his previous crimes. He was not hiding. In 2004, he kidnapped one of the gang members just because he thought he was having an affair with the woman he likes. He beats him and eventually he gets caught. He gets a four-year sentence and was released in 2009. It was reported that her mother disrespected Fruto's grave and said that she destroyed her son's life. Like, excuse me? Now Shinji, who changed his name Nuburano Minato, 
moved with his mother after getting released. He also got married but divorced. Even had a Twitter account like active one where he talk about like Japan, like new news or something like that. I guess people even found out and they would comment about her on his posts and he just ignores them. He was also arrested for beating a man and stabbing him with a knife in the neck. Luckily, the man survived, but he was put on probation. He even had a a YouTube channel and it was said like allegedly that he posted a tweet in which he said he's grown now. He learned from his past mistakes and and yeah, which I don't believe no one cares or believed. Now last, Watanabe. He was actually the one who hadn't committed any crime reportedly. It was said that after release, his mother and he sold their house and moved on to different city and become a hikokromi. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Which are basically individuals who isolate themselves from society. Their mindset is that if they are getting food and watching TV, why would they even get out and try to work or socialize? So yeah, it's not a really healthy life. So this is how their lives are, as if for now, they are free. Fruto's funeral also happened in April 1989. One of her friends wrote a letter like all her classmates, which states something like this. In her graduation, the principal gave her parents a diploma. Her intense future employee presented her parents with the uniform she would have worn in her position, and they placed everything in her casket. They left the house and moved to a different city. Junku will always be remembered for her kindness and her behavior with her friends and people around her. And I hope these four people live longer so they can feel her pain every time they close their eyes at night. So yeah, this was the story of Junku Fruta, one of the Japanese worst cases. What do you guys think? Let me know and I'll see you guys next time.